I doubt that 1% of people really understand what we're facing here. The prospect of systemic environmental collapse, the collapse of the whole thing, our life support systems in total. Human beings, alongside most of the life on Earth today, evolved in particular environmental circumstances, which is the Earth in what's called its Holocene state. That state is kept in a sort of stable equilibrium by the ocean, the atmosphere, the biosphere, which means all the life on Earth, the soil, the water. All of these are complex systems which come together to create this amazingly complex system called the Earth system. Complex systems have a set of interesting characteristics. Through their self-regulating properties, they can absorb quite a lot of stress and still maintain an equilibrium state. So if you think about your body, you can run a mile on a hot day, really go for it, and your body temperature remains exactly the same as it was before you started. You can go and have a snowball fight on a really cold day and stay out for a couple of hours and your body temperature is still exactly the same as when you started. And what you've got is this system just constantly regulating itself and maintaining that body temperature. But if you are subject to too much cold stress or too much heat stress, things spiral out of control and you can spiral into hypothermia where you get colder and colder and then you die or into hyperthermia where you get hotter and hotter and then you die. We face quite a similar problem with our earth systems. They reach a tipping point and once they pass that tipping point, they collapse into a completely different state. And when you've collapsed, when that tipping point has been crossed, there is no going back. We're trying to tell you that the entire planet is about to be destroyed. The way we know whether we are approaching a tipping point is that the outputs from a system begin to flicker. You get more and more fluctuations. And what we've seen has been what looks like a great global flickering. These extreme weather events, droughts, heat domes, floods, fires, and the rest of it. You do understand that this is an apocalyptic event. I hear you. I hear you. Far more extreme than anything in the historical record and indeed anything in the recent prehistorical record either. This looks like the flickering which precedes a tipping point, which would be hostile to human life and indeed to most of the life on Earth today. I say, we sit tight and assess. Am I to understand correctly that after all of the information you've received today, the decision you're making is to sit tight and assess? If you were to take this seriously, you would be throwing at it everything we've got. Much as they did when a different system, the financial system, came close to collapse in 2008. It didn't quite pass its tipping point, but it came pretty close to that. It started with mortgage defaults in the US, really quite small. But that was enough to destabilize this already quite fragile system and push the whole thing until it came very near to total collapse. When Lehman Brothers collapsed, that nearly brought the whole thing down. And governments moved with extraordinary speed and decisiveness and poured altogether trillions of dollars into the global financial system to try to shore it back and push it back into its safe space, into its safe equilibrium state. Now we can argue about whether they did the right thing or the wrong thing and the way that they did it, bailouts going to the major criminals in the system and the rest of it, we can argue about all that. But there is absolutely no doubt about the need for very rapid and decisive action. If we don't stop the bleeding, in three days, half the banks in this room are out of business. In five days, we're all gone. If we were to take the same attitude to the tipping point of our Earth systems, that's what we would be doing. We'd be moving in with extraordinary speed and effect to make that decisive change right here, right now, rather than saying, yeah, let's aim for net zero by 2050 and we'll reduce emissions by 2% every year. It's just not going to work. The president's plan to save Earth and make it so we can all have a home is going to work, right? Every single man, woman, and child on this planet is going to die. I don't like him. He makes me sad. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's Kids, listen to me. Hurt. You tell your parents! If you're going to prevent a tipping point, you have to push them back into their safe equilibrium state before they reach that point. If governments want things to happen, they can make things happen if they choose to. 
but most of the time they just don't. What's missing is not the money, it's not the technology, it's the political will. And how come they were ready to bail out the financial sector, but they're not ready to bail out the planet? Is it because the planet isn't paying them to win the next election, it's not producing their campaign funds for them? Is it because the oceans aren't whispering into their ear? Is it because the forests don't own the media? Of course, there's only one story everyone's talking about tonight. Topless urgent care centers. They are so hooked on the short-term interests of their corporate sponsors, of their oligarch sponsors, that they'll do whatever they want, but they won't do what it takes to prevent the collapse of life on Earth. And I'm sure many of the people out there aren't even going to listen to what I just said because, you know, they have their own political ideology. But I, I assure you, I am not on one side or the other. I, I'm just telling you the fucking truth. Now, the hopeful side of the story is this, that just as Earth systems are complex systems and they can tip into a different state, the same applies to human systems, the same applies to society and we can tip society into a different state. And in fact, there's quite a lot of science being done on this now, both observational and experimental science. Once you get a committed minority of around 25%, then the whole of society can tip. Most people, most of the time, side with the status quo, for good or for ill, very often for ill. And once you reach that 25%, that threshold, that seems to be where the tipping point is. And then suddenly people look around and they all oh, things have changed, I better change with it. And they tack round to catch that wind. We've finally seen it. It's real and it's coming. We have proof. Just look up. Just look up. And that's what we need to do. That's what we can do. We just need to reach that 25% committed minority and society will change. And so we need to get together in our millions to demand the changes required to prevent systemic environmental collapse, to demand that we retain a habitable planet. All effective movements are an ecosystem. They need lots of people using their different skills, bringing those skills together, do what they do best. The alternative media is absolutely essential. It's a crucial component of that ecosystem of change. So please support Double Down News, become a sponsor on Patreon.